Well, if you know what this bench is, and you know how special it is to me, then you've been a fan of the channel for a long time. We're glad to have you here. I finally finished up this Dream Roto Bench build from a really old product Craftsman made back in the day called the Roto Bench. But within a four foot by 29 inch footprint, I have seven different tools on one tool cart. So the shop space has just dramatically saved a big uh, footprint. And check this out. This thing rotates around to put the tool you need into place. In this video, I am doing a deep dive into everything I learned about it because it is on its like fourth generation of it. How I use the casters to make it wildly mobile. Just everything about this is is awesome. So I made a long one. I'll put chapters in below so you can kind of bounce around. This thing's really cool. And if you've never used some of these products, I think you're really going to enjoy it yourself. All right, my friends, let's get into this. It's been about eight years in the making. Hey, friend, smash that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Also, we have hundreds of videos and playlists on here for you. Enjoy the video. All right, I'm on to the project of the Roto Bench. And if you hadn't seen this before, what it is is a bench that has these three sides so you can mount tools and then rotate it around. I'm super excited to use it, but Craftsman came up this years ago. I just picked up another one because I for surely have a whole bunch of tools I want to mount to this and not take up so much floor space. But once I started to kind of plan this out, what I realized is the angle at which I'd have to lift this to get onto the wheels they had was just going to be unachievable once I get all that weight, right? And I was like going to weld handles on here. But once I kind of practiced it, if you will, it was a really extreme angle. So I'm going to install these quick release adapters for these flip up casters. And I was getting ready to set everything out to weld it. And I actually think I can just bolt them on easier because one of the holes is already done, which means I only got to drill four holes. And that's what we're going to try now. So I'm going to speed this up and you can just watch the time lapse or you can skip ahead to find out what this turned out like. So let's go. Before I start to show you how I installed this accessory and what we did here, this is the number one modification we did to this workbench compared to its original design. That was to make it mobile and roll much easier with a lot of weight. But I want to take a step further and put these casters on that not only make it mobile, but they're also removable so I could get it on firm feet and take advantage of the tools that have a lot of vibration. I wanted them to work in a firm space. So let me show you what that product is first. This also blows my mind how fast deals change. And for some reason, this stuff always seems to be cheaper than when I bought it. When I bought it, you'd have to buy the caster separate and then the bracket kit. And now you can buy all four casters at a couple different weight options. You get 600 pounds or 900 pounds, as you can see there. But they come with the quick release brackets, which just blows my mind. Because I paid like 30 some dollars just for the four casters. Well, if you're anything like me, you see a tool and you think, oh, I got to have it. I'm going to use that someday. And that was a problem for me is these stay on the shelf for a long time. And I bought different products from different people. So I wasn't sure if that template was going to work and had to manually measure it. Today, since you can buy an all-in-one kit, man, that's awesome. So same exact ones I bought, it's just a package deal. Let me show you how to install them. I put multiple of these on and you really want to follow the instructions for the height off the ground and then also have them parallel to a piece of equipment so that the casters can take full advantage of riding on the wheels nice and level with the ground. But pretty simple, drill some holes, mount them up, good to go. Let me show you how they work. All right, let me show you how rad this really is. Got some sharp edges on here. This might be easy now. It gets heavy. What you really want to do is make sure. If you use different brands of casters, the instructions won't work that come with these brackets. So what I like to do is do that test fit that I originally did, just to see where the ground actually is. And then from the ground, I'll find that sweet spot that the cam is just gonna start to then do its job. But if you use the two and a half inch measurement, but you have a bigger caster, you're gonna be screwed. So this is what we want. And what 
I did on a, on a different set, I'm not going to do it on this yet unless it becomes a problem, is if you have really super uneven ground or you're going to bump this with your foot, it could slam down on you. So what I did to solve that is just drill the hole through the movable and the non-movable part of the cam here, and I took a trailer hitch pin, put it in like that. I did that on my mill because it's such a heavy piece of equipment, I didn't want to risk it. like slamming out of control and it wasn't a very stable platform because it was a really small base too for so much top weight so that was super awesome to be able to lock here's that top heavy mill that i was talking about and i want to show you how quick this goes on it's a little bit better video than the one i did on the bench so as you can see you take the caster just slip it into the bracket on this one we welded them then you take the securing pin which is quick release no tools required set that in place and it stops the cast from going out and then you would just step on it to raise it. Well, take a look at what I did here. I drilled a hole straight through the movable, non-movable to lock that in place so that it couldn't be bumped up. And then what I simply did is took this hitch pin off an everyday trailer hitch. I can drop it through, quick release. Once again, no tools required. And then it keeps everything securely in place. Watch me move this around. All right, here we go. Now this is the first time I ever used these. And I learned two really valuable lessons. Number one, they really like a clean floor. If you have any rocks or like in my case, I got a bunch of the debris from welding and grinding on the floor. It really gets caught up on those wheels and makes a kind of a pain. You'll see I'm kind of struggling and moving around. And the second thing I really learned from this project was you want to have them out as wide as possible on that base for something that's really top heavy like that. I'm actually pushing around somewhere between 900 and 950 pounds right now. But the fact that I can do that alone and kind of shove it in place, flip it off the casters, back down to the adjustable wheels to have a level tool, super cool. Let's get back to the roto bench. That in place with these, but like I said, for this, as of now, I don't think I'm gonna need to do it. If I do, no big deal, I just pull them back out, go up the drill press, pop a hole through, boom, I got a lock pin, and I'm good to go. I've never seen anybody else do this. I think it's a great safety feature. Well, like always, I'm going to show you the things I learned so that you don't have to go through those same lessons. We see that rubber lip by the garage door that really wanted to kind of hop over that. So I found I needed to pin them in this case. And I added even more accessories, as you'll see in the end. I just thought this was being harder than it should be. And I could see that the stock feet were the problem or making it really jump because I'm hitting that. So I'm raising those up a little bit more right now. Going, get rid of that and then get a level. I thought I'd show you my little setup for how I drill that hole to put the, the safety pin through. It's pretty dang hard, believe it or not, to drill through that by hand and get through those four surfaces. So what I did is you take the wheel back off and then you'll see I made a little shim set up a washers in here so that as I'm drilling the pressure doesn't want to rotate this. I've got a sacrificial piece of wood underneath so that you know I don't drill through and then I found a block that fit in here that what I could do is put this in the the fully down position where the cam is flat to this bracket and then what I realized if you tried to make it too perfect to a quarter inch which was the pin that I used hitch pin these are off trailer hitch I would have to kind of like bend and like force things in there and I want things to be just smooth and free you know like it's supposed to be so what I did is went up to uh, 5 16 and that gave me that little bit of wiggle room that they go in there just fantastic and then once there's a load on it anyway it kind of centers itself in that that little extra hole so this is how I did that to make it much easier if you don't know much about drilling using a countersink first will make your drill bits last a heck of a lot longer then I went to quarter and then stepped it up to uh, the 5 16 and it just works great as you're going to see in a sec. I kept going back and forth in this video because it seems like I'm saying simple things, but the reality of it is if you've never used like these flip casters or you haven't really thought about your tool organization, these can become so frustrating you may not want to use them at all. And they're pretty awesome if you learn these little details on how to position the caster. None of this stuff comes in the direction. So I'm going to go ahead and do kind of the deeper dive. If you want to just fast forward to seeing how the roto bench works and the tools on it, you can skip ahead. But let me give you some really good pointers so that you can love this product as much as I do now. I want to make a point 
of, of, of something that can be, you know, seem like there's a problem when there really isn't. So when, when you install these, just lower these, I found it way easier to make sure the wheel is facing out like this. Sometimes where the ground is, especially if you're like unlevel back there and there's a lot of like downward angle on this, you're going to find that this just doesn't want to go in here and it's going to be cumbersome you're going to think something's wrong but if you put it in its very lowest position which is right here the articulation of that cam and whatnot that is the lowest position you always will get it in and out the other thing just to make note if you didn't notice these brackets are directional you wouldn't want that on here you could find yourself struggling with some obstructions in some cases and especially if you're going to tuck this against a wall and you're thinking about like, hey, I wanna be able to put this tight up against the wall, and then I wanna be able to pull the piece of equipment out. In that case, you'd wanna take that back caster and slide it in that way, so that you don't have to muscle that tool like away from the wall. So that was another little uh, tip that I discovered, but I am ready to utilize this tool now. I'm gonna start putting the equipment up here. And I can't wait. No weight on there rolls around pretty good. So let me let me show you what this is gonna do. God, that's gonna be so nice. And I don't even have the feet leveled or anything, right? So what I'm gonna be able to do is these pull out. work as nice little workbenches when your selected tools in place but then you pull this pin and then I can take and get this up to the next tool. You can see here I got a board missing. Nope, that's as far as it goes. And then when you put these back in, did you notice that little wiggle wiggle when you put these back in they've got this lip that goes under there and grabs onto that and then you get the strength of all this to make it a more stable workbench my understanding so far i want to make sure that whatever tool will clear the ground so i'm going to have to measure this distance and see what exactly will fit on there so that it'll have the ability to rotate and then also it couldn't come into obstruction with with anything out there all right, first off, I want to get the, since I'm going to operate it, I want it on the ground. I don't want the caster walking around on me. I will show those again in a second. All right, here's another huge tip that's really going to save you some problems and some redo work. And just ask me how I know. Well, I had this one bandsaw on the right here that I really wanted to put on here, but it's quite tall. And what would happen with that bandsaw is that I could not run 360 degrees of the table. So if you have one really tall tool, what you can do is you can make that one where it can rotate in either direction. So I'm going to have an arrow on there that says I could go either way when moving it so I don't forget later on. Because what I don't want is I don't want it in the position like the left photo. And then I forget that I can't continue rotating. So that means for the other two tools, the grinder and the sander in this case, they can only be rotated one direction. So the grinder, for example, can only rotate to the right which would bring that bandsaw up, right? And then if I continue rotating, I can move that bandsaw all the way to the right, which would then bring the sander that's top. So the sander, once it's up, can only rotate left then so that I don't have any problem with that tall tool hitting the ground. A couple little arrows, it's gonna do a great job keep from causing damage to my tools. It is really nice to take advantage of putting one tall tool on here that still can fit within that side space so what i'm going to do here that tool's lighter than this one so uh, the weight is side loading that pin if i push away from it it makes it really easy to operate and then once i get up here just kind of guide it into place and boom you know i'll double check things then what you do is it has these support boards that when you're ready to use that tool it gives you even more rigidity. And I mean, it's a snug tight fit and you put the other one on. 
And then it really gets solid and then it's taken all the weight off that pin anyway. And I haven't tried this board yet, so I want to make sure that it fits. Boy, they make that tight, which I like. I think I know why you could put 75 pounds on there. That thing is as rigid as can be. <laughs> that is so freaking cool. All right, here's what's also so great about it. I don't want to make a mess in the shop. I want to make the mess out there. I want to close this garage door and keep all the dust and junk out of the shop. That's why I put dirty tools on here. So this thing, way too heavy to drag around. The casters it came with, you had to lift this like there's no handles you had to lift it like all the way up here with all this weight on there it just wasn't going to happen it was awkward enough just with those so the solution is these quick release casters if you watch the whole video you'll see these being put on but anyway what's so great about these is i just do these brackets and i can take these and move them to other equipment and i can make a smaller footprint if I want to put it up against a wall or something. So I talk uh, more about that in a different part of the video, but there you go. So this is so fast, no hardware, no nothing, okay? And then what you want to do is have the wheel facing out. It puts the cam in a place to operate. Boom, that's it. Watch this, you ain't gonna believe this. <laughs> Can you imagine? I should have weighed all the tools just to show like how much weight that really is. How freaking stinking cool is that? You know, I bought the first one of these back in Iowa and I've drug it around like three states and was dead set. It was something I wanted to have in my shop. Maybe because I don't see other people doing it too. So I thought it'd be you know, something fun to play with. Over the years, what I've learned is probably as it came, it was a little bit of a pain in the butt. I think there was just a few things that needed to be uh, worked through. And this configuration right here, I could tell I'm thrilled with. You know, like I said, a couple of the, you, you gotta decide when you're, when you're making tools and using tools, like how often do you want to access it, right? Like how often are you gonna use it? If you're gonna use it all the time, you want it you know, ready to go. And I will tell you this, if you have a tool and it's not easy to access, you tend to not use it. And maybe you should, right? Maybe it'd be uh, highly beneficial. Well, I've been using this for about, oh, six weeks now, and I just can't express enough how much I love it. Uh, I think I'm in a final configuration, and I wanted to show you what I ended up doing for the tool selection. So when you watch the video of me showing you how to operate it, I had that grinder on the center there. I started to realize I had, like, this wasted space of these, these pull-out sides. And then I also got to a point where I was like, shoot, I know that typically when I want to use a bench grinder, I also want to use a belt sander. A good example is like if you cut a bolt off and you have to redress the threads and you want to use both processes, you might use that to be really quick and then this to just kind of clean up the burrs. Whatever the case is, it's extremely common that these tools want to be used at the same time. So the idea of having to pull these sides out and then flip the tool, I started having big regret. I was like, dang, this is just a pain in the butt. So much so that I bought another roto bench just to have two and then I have plenty of other tools around here. I've got a table saw that would even fit on it. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. And then it hit me. Why don't I make the tools that I put on these something that I could pull out and then use on any of the other processes? Maybe I'm cutting something on the bandsaw and you get down with that little piece of wood or if you had a metal one or whatnot and you wanted to clean it up with a grinder, a wire brush, or a sander, the fact that I can have that up in position, then slide this 
back on to give the table the support. Now I end up having at least something that I could sand on and I have something with a wire brush or a stone wheel to be able to not have to rotate around those processes. So much so I've even thought about switching these two around and making this the one that's outside facing. It's such a dang good idea, I think I have to do it. And then moving this one inside, because then that way, no matter what I'm doing, I'd have this guy and this guy. You know what? I think I like that too much. Dang it, I thought I was done, but I'm gonna flip those around. In all honesty, I don't do much woodwork, so I'm hardly ever using that unless I'm making stuff for like tool displays or stands. I just, I don't use a bandsaw a lot. And I'm just at the point where I'm really pretty much done with any kind of carpentry stuff. Uh, I can't even think of a time I'm gonna be using this in the future because of just how far I am and, and everything I've made. But while I'm under here, this was cool to use of space. I just took some eyelet bolts and put all my spares, like all my sanding belts for this guy and this guy in that little tote so that it stays with it. But Super cool. Well, my friends, put some comments below. What'd you think of this project? Is it something you want to do for yourself? I'm actually going to sell my other one. Thought about even breaking it down and doing like a, a giveaway or something, but you can probably find one of these locally. Anyway, I thought this was just an absolutely out of this world project. I'm so happy with it. And, you know, all the different places it has given me that freedom to move around tight spaces. I haven't even hardly started this shop. Last week was the first time I basically started working on this area here where it's really going to be what I would consider my dirty room. I picked up a few new pieces of equipment, the sharpening tool that I thought that's going to be really neat. And then I got a, a different radial. I saw the other one because I just like this one better because it had a more articulating table. And then I really want to start to work this way and get all these tools that are sitting on benches. They're all going to get hung up. Obviously, like everything else in the main shop, it's going to get super organized. I need this flexibility in this work area to just move this equipment around. If I want to use that bench once it's cleared off, I'll be able to slide this all the way over and I have a really nice uh, workbench so I could take, you know, stuff right from the workbench here and back and forth. Drill press as well, having a space to actually set stuff when I do those processes. That big sander right there, I bought this thing for, I think, 20 bucks on a garage sale and it's literally just a broken switch so that'll be a nice easy fix got a nice piece of uh, equipment there and i'm going to take that one and mount it on this stand that i picked up from something else which already had the rolling stand made for it had a place to put a little paper towel rack little storage underneath so man everything just keeps coming together making a lot of progress this is another thing that i just picked up uh, for really fast, quick adjustment. I've got these that I'm going to dial into, you know, the uh, chop saw bed here. So I can just throw stuff on and chop it and go. And then it folds down if I really need it out of the way and think, well, you know, I haven't used that thing in three months. Let's just get it out of the way. That can go under a bench that folds up in the corner and boom, problem's gone. All right, my friends, if you haven't done so yet, please make sure and like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to get back at making the next tool or working in the shop. As always, my friends, make it a great day and keep wrenching.